Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Benchmade Knives and Jared Osa Tengu Tool. Um, so, uh, there, there we go. First off, though, I want to thank very much KnifeJoy, actually, for sending this guy along. They were curious about my thoughts about it. They uh, sent me one to check out. I appreciate that very much, KnifeJoy. Um, thank you for that. Next thing, let's do some size comparison real quick. I'll go ahead and I'll deploy the knife. Uh, first, then we'll take a look at the uh, Ontario Rat number 2. Uh, here it is against the Spydeco Paramilitary 2 right there. Um, and then here it is against the Spydeco Delica. So we can see here, yeah, um, this is a small little knife. And then actually I'll compare it to another relevant uh, point is the uh, Benchmade Proper, which is another slip joint from Benchmade Knife Company. So there you go. Next thing, um, this is going to be a uh, quick review because honestly there's not uh, all that much to say about the little guy. And then finally, this is a collaboration with Jared Osa. Osa is a, uh, people, he's pretty well known in the custom uh, knife game for uh, some uh, really reasonably nice traditional stuff, and you can see a little bit of that traditional style uh, kind of infused throughout there. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what I like about it and what I don't like so much, and we'll jump to the final conclusion. On the, uh, I mean, to start with, actually, I think it's kind of a nice idea, right? This is what's called a friction folder. The only thing that's keeping this blade open is the uh, basically the position of your fingers and your thumb here. There's, uh, uh, this is going to make it very difficult for the thing to close, and similarly, uh, but there's no lock on this guy. There's no detent. There's no really nothing. It's just these two chunks of G10 here with a standoff and then the, the blade in the middle there. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of nice. And it has a... Uh, what, what's in here is actually a relatively small 20CV knife blade here, as well as on the other side here, a pry bar slash um, flathead screwdriver, although it's actually relatively... Uh, small next to most flatheads um as well as a um cap lifter sort of thing here so i mean it's a it's a neat little idea right um something that can either be a pry tool or a knife and it's reasonably well executed so that, that, that's good next thing the materials on this guy are pretty nice um the, the uh, g10 on this guy is actually quite neat it's sort of a uh, white and black g10 i mean it is literally white and black so it's not sort of it is actually white and black g10 uh with a little bit of a shield in there uh, and i'm not exactly sure how that is um, you can't really feel the... Either this is really well sanded or it's a special piece of G10 made that way. I, look, I don't know, but either way, it looks pretty nice. It's a uh, 20CV steel blade here. And 20CV is a great steel, by the way. I mean, it's it's a pretty good contender for the very best pocket knife steel out there in 2020. Um, but maybe not the best, but I don't know. And then it comes with a little leather slip right here, which is actually made of, well leather. Um, and it's reasonably well sewn and things like that. And it's a reasonably soft leather. It's not like the plasticky stuff you can get sometimes. So materials here are good. Next thing, design-wise, it's pretty good. Um, it's got a lot of the Gerardosa sort of DNA. It looks a little bit traditional in the handle there. It's got a nice little swedge at the top of the blade, an interesting grind, etc. And it kind of mirrors the full-size Tengu. Um, and so I can see a number of people who really like the Tengu design, wanting this as a sort of uh, fashion accessory, if you will. Um, and so there's that. Next thing, the blade on this guy is decent enough. It's a relatively little blade. Um, the stock is a little thicker, but it's got some distal taper here. And actually, it thins out to a reasonably thin edge down here. It's... Um, it, it's a reasonable edge, um, and given that it's made of 20 CV, you know what? That works pretty well. I'm uh, I'm pretty okay with that. It's it's got a, a pretty decent little blade here, and then finally, this is a very legal knife. I mean, the the actual length of the knife uh, blade is just over an inch here, uh, just under three centimeters. This should be legal in a lot of places. Of course, talk to your lawyer, not a YouTuber, but still, um, that, that that's going to be nice. And the fact that it is a non-locking knife is going to make this an option for a bunch more people. And the fact that it looks like this is going to make it pretty innocuous. This is something that I suspect is going to be lunchroom friendly in a pretty wide variety of lunchrooms. So, um, at least to me, that's that's what's good here, is that it is super legal. It's got a nice little blade with a sharpening choil, by the way. That's a nice thing. Uh, a nice design, nice materials, and a pretty nice idea. On the bad side, um, to start with, uh, like I said, the blade stock is a little bit thick here. They grind it, they taper it. It's it's okay, but it's a little on the thicker side than I expected. Then again, if you're using this as a pry bar, then okay, sure, why not? Next thing, there is no detent on this guy. Um, That, that means that there is really nothing except, you know, the, the, the inherent kind of stick slippitude of the action itself, uh, keeping this knife open or closed, or your hand on it there. Um, this isn't really a problem, but it was something that I sort of, I, I was wondering if they were going like the front flipper route or something like that, but it makes it a little, uh, my only real objection is it makes it a little tricky to feel when it's closed or open all the way. 
But again, they're keeping simplicity here. So whatever, it's not a big deal. Next thing, um, this is a little nitpick, but I'd like to see a little bit of jimping here and a little bit of jimping here. The only reason I say that is because, and mind you, you know, what are you really doing? Are you stab it into pieces, you know, bags of sand or something like that to open them up with this guy? No. But it would make it possible to slide up onto this blade, given that there's not a whole lot of texture going on in this guy. At some level, I can see them trying to keep it classy, keep it simple, but oh, that seems like something they missed there. Um, the next thing, if you got, if you keep this guy in the slip as this, in this configuration, which is generally how I recommend it, the pry bar on it is definitely sticking up out of the slip just a little bit. That means it is going to attack some things in your pocket. It's not terrible. It's reasonably rounded edges and such, but that is still something to keep in mind. You got a piece of hardened CV or I'm sorry, Harden 20 CV, uh, bounce it around in your pocket there. But then finally, the 800-pound gorilla in the room is the price on this guy. Um, as I was carrying this, as I was kind of playing, I, I try to make an effort to uh, either not know the price or to forget the price as quickly as I can as I'm carrying something, using it for review. I had this guy in my head around 80 bucks and was thinking to myself, you know, okay, it's made in the U.S., it's, a, you know, butterfly tax, whatever. About 80 bucks sounds about where I expect this to come in. Uh, it turns out it's 150 and, um, yeah, so that's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. So, uh, uh, to me, that's what's on the bad side here, is that it is very expensive, really expensive. The pry bar is sticking out of the slip a little bit here. There's no detent, and you are uh, going to have, the uh, stock is a little bit on the thick side. Final conclusions, this is a neat little tool at some level, right? I mean, it is. It's got a nice little pry bar here. It's got this cap lifter. I mean, it's a little blade, and it's going to be super legal in a bunch of places with nice enough materials, design, etc. There is some stuff to bring joy here, and mind you, you're going to be carrying it in a little sleeve because you, there's no detent. You can't just toss it in the pocket or something like that. Maybe if you put it in your key pocket, but even still, without the detent, I, I'd want to go sleeve on this guy. Uh, no, no sleeveless in Seattle right here. Um, it, it's probably not the best tool for any of the given tasks. It's probably not the best pry bar out there, not the best cap lift, although the cap lift did work fine. Um, and it's certainly, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the biggest issue this thing has is that price point. You hit the price point it's kind of all over for me um, because this is a fine little tool it's easily something I could recommend for a certain use and a certain person and honestly I'm sure there is somebody out there the reason I'm reviewing this at all is because there may be somebody out there maybe who's dealing with local laws that are problematic that make it illegal to carry something locking or require blades under two inches or something like that there could be a situation for which this is a, a, a good tool for somebody where they're going to be like oh yeah actually that is exactly what I need and they're willing to pay that price but oh that price Price. I mean, to give you a sense of that, this is the exact same price. Actually, no, it's 10 bucks more than the Hogue Knives Mini RSK here, which is another 20 CV knife, uh, actually with thinner blade stock, which is entertaining. Um, but it is a full-on freaking pocket knife. Um, it's beautifully done there. This is uh, this is the same price as, as three Spyderco Ladybugs, which is another really great pocket-sized little tool here. Um, and you could get two of these guys and a very, very nice pry bar. I mean, heck, it's only 25 bucks less than a Benchmade Mini Griptilian and 20 CV with a little hole in it, which is probably one of the best things Benchmade makes. It's only 30 bucks less than a full-size Tango. I mean, honestly, when somebody first told me the price of this knife, I didn't believe them. I was like, oh, <laughs> come on. Okay, LOL. Yeah, fuck, sure thing. 150 bucks. I had to look it up for myself. Because like I said, I, I came in here way lower than this, even adding in that padding. And so unfortunately, at 150 bucks, it's just like, woof. That's going to be tricky. So I'm in this really awkward position with this knife of like, oh, this is a neat little trick. It's kind of cool. I like some elements of this. This is something that I think is going to appeal to a lot of people. But then you hit the price point and it's just like, mm, not so much. So as of right now, unfortunately, I think this is a nice piece. And I think there is a very good price at which this could be super compelling. But unfortunately, until the current price changes, I'm afraid that any desirability, unless you've got a very specific set of situations, is going to be tenuous at best. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.